In a recent episode of Country File, Matt Baker visited a dairy farm in Devon. At the farm, he discusses with the farmer the separation of the newborn dairy calves. And Country File fans were so upset they took to the internet to voice their complaints. Now, it seems like there's a little bit of a shift happening in some areas of the farming world. Normally, we don't hear too much about the separation of newborn dairy calves, but what's interesting about this Country File episode is how they were quite upfront about it, but they tried to place a positive spin on what they are doing. So instead of just glossing over the fact that they do separate newborn calves from their mothers, this farm seemed to have taken the approach of appearing transparent. It's like they want to appear transparent to try and build up the trust of the consumer. But the problem is they're appearing transparent about something that is so obviously awful. So now what they have to do is try and put a positive spin on what it is that they're doing. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt for just a moment, but I want to tell you all about Brilliant, because Brilliant is a fun, visual, and stimulating way to learn all about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's focused on interactive learning to make it as effective as possible, and it also gives you the flexibility to learn at your own pace so you can learn on the go as well. Brilliant is also designed for everyone as well, which means it's great if you are a beginner, but it's also great if you're looking for more advanced courses for professionals as well. This means that Brilliant is great if you're looking to learn something for the first time, but also if you're looking to build on the foundations that you already have. Their courses are also designed by professionals and teachers from places like MIT and Caltech. So if Brilliant sounds like something that you would be interested in, then you can sign up for free right now by going to brilliant.org forward slash earthling ed and also if you click the link in my description the first 200 people to do so will also get 20 percent off a premium annual subscription as well all right so thank you so much to brilliant for sponsoring today's video but now let's get back to country file now what's really interesting about people's outrage to this particular segment is the farm in question don't use solitary confinement calf hutches. Instead, they use these group housing systems. Now these solitary hutches are actually the industry standard, including in the UK, where calves for the first eight weeks of their life legally can be kept in these solitary confinement pens. And yet even though the program is showcasing the best of the best, this is literally the best that you can get when it comes to dairy farming, it was still bad enough to draw condemnation and criticism from viewers of the program. And doesn't that just show you how uneducated we are about what happens to animals? The fact that we don't even know what is standard practice in these industries, and even when we're shown a situation which is literally the best of the best, we still look at that and go, that's really awful. But anyway, let's take a look at the segment and see what the farmers have to say about the separations. Ideally, we take them off as soon as possible. We let the, the mother cow um, lick the calf because it's, it's really important to release the pheromones in the cow's brain. Right. It helps with pain relief. Um, but after that, we take the calf away to make sure it's had its colostrum that it, yeah. it really needs. And that term colostrum then, that, that really special milk with all of the antibodies and what have you in, I mean, that's really key to get into them. How do you give them that kind of immunity? With a cow, there's no immunity passed through the placenta, so it's 100% dependent on the colostrum. Yeah. Um, but with dairy cows, they produce so much milk that um, the colostrum gets diluted away within a matter of hours. So we take the calf away, put it somewhere nice and clean and cosy, and then um, milk the cow, and then feed the calf the colostrum. How long do they stay in this barn, Alice? Um, so they'll be in here for 14 weeks, and then after that, they go outside and enjoy the sunshine on their back. Now in many dairy farms, dairy farmers will keep the mother and calf together until the calf has had a chance to drink the colostrum from their mother. However, on this dairy farm, it seems like they take the newborn babies away from their mothers even earlier than that. It's like the mothers give birth, they lick their baby clean, and then in comes the farmer to forcibly separate the newborn baby from their mother. Now what's really interesting is the farmer actually addresses the fact that the colostrum is diluted in the milk because of the large volumes of milk that the mother cow produces. However, what they don't mention is why this is the case. Now this is obviously because we have selectively bred dairy cows to produce as much milk 
as they possibly can. And then on top of that, we give them a specific type of feed to further optimize their milk production. In other words, we humans have done absolutely everything that we possibly can to make these cows produce as much milk as they possibly can so that we can extract as much profit from their bodies as we possibly can. So the reason the colostrum is being diluted is because of what we have done to these animals. And yet now we're using what we have done to these animals as a reason to take their babies away from them. We have exploited them, selectively bred them, and manipulated them to fit our profiteering desires. And now we're using what we have done to them as a reason to cause them pain and psychological suffering. But this still isn't a justifiable reason to separate a newborn baby from their mother. You could still milk the mother cow and then bottle feed the baby to make sure the baby gets all the colostrum that they need and keep them together at the same time. You don't need to separate them to make sure the baby gets all the colostrum that they need. You can do the exact same thing, but keep them together as well. But of course, the dairy industry doesn't want to keep the babies with their mothers. The dairy industry wants to be able to take as much milk as they possibly can for themselves so they can sell as much milk as they possibly can and make as much money as they possibly can. And of course, a baby suckling from their mother and drinking their mother's milk is less milk that the dairy farmer can then sell, which means that's less money the dairy farmer can then make. And fundamentally, that is the reason newborn babies are taken away from their mothers. Dairy farmers will tell you all sorts of things. A few more we'll address in just a moment. They'll tell you all of the reasons why it's justified, but fundamentally what it always boils down to is farmers want to take as much milk as they possibly can, and a baby suckling from their mother stops them from being able to do that. Now, one thing that's always interesting to do with dairy farmers is take what they say, the excuses they use, and the justifications they use to explain why they take babies away from their mothers, and then compare what happens in the dairy industry to what happens in the beef industry. Case in point, newborn calves aren't separated from their mothers in the beef industry. Why not? Well, firstly, because there isn't the excuse of diluted colostrum in the beef industry, because we've not selectively bred beef cows to produce excessive amounts of milk. But also secondly, and most importantly, there isn't a financial incentive to take babies away from their mothers in the beef industry. In fact, actually, the financial incentive is to keep the babies with their mothers, because the babies can feed off of their mothers and it causes them to grow, which means less feed has to be given to the calves because they can just feed off their mothers as they naturally would. So actually from a financial perspective, it's better for beef farmers to keep the newborn calves with their mothers. And so isn't that interesting that the industry where there's a financial incentive to separate them is where the separations are found. And then the industry where the financial incentive is to keep them together is also where they are kept together. Because when we boil it down, that's fundamentally the situation that we find ourselves in. The industry where there is a profiteering motivation behind these separations is the industry where these separations take place. Now, hmm, isn't that just so convenient? But don't worry, because actually the forced separations are in the best interests of the newborn baby. You see, once the newborn baby has been forcibly taken from their mother, the farmer can now properly look after the newborn baby because they can make sure they're fed so they don't die from malnourishment and starvation and make sure they're protected from diseases and illnesses. Except, of course, in the beef industry where the babies aren't forcibly taken from their mothers, they don't die from diseases and illnesses, and they also don't die from starvation and malnourishment. So that's pretty confusing, isn't it? But here's another recurring theme from the dairy industry. To justify what they do, they often take a scattergun approach, where they'll use so many different excuses and so many different justifications, and then they hope that one of them will stick. But in the end, what they're left with is fundamentally a lot of different farmers using a lot of different excuses to justify why they do what they do. This dilution of colostrum, have you ever heard that before? 
I've not heard that before. This is the first time I heard that dairy calves need to be taken away from their mothers because of diluted colostrum. It's normally one of these other reasons, and yet all of a sudden, this is a new reason. Like I just said, on this farm, it's to do with the colostrum. On other farms, it's to do with making sure the babies are well looked after, so they don't die from starvation and they can be properly taken care of. Don't you understand? The reason we need to place these newborn babies into solitary confinement hutches where they can't even move around properly is so we can properly take care of them. That is such a prevalent excuse that they use. And then some dairy farmers just come out and say, well, hey, dairy cows are awful mothers, and so we have to take the babies away from them to protect their babies. For example, just check out these tweets from someone trying to defend the separations. Dawn McKenna says, dairy cows are very poor mothers. They often kill or abandon calves and typically won't feed them. A calf needs colostrum to have an immune system. That's why. Dawn added, not all cows produce quality colostrum or permit a calf to nurse after birth. By taking a calf, the farmer can give consistent colostrum, ensure the calf gets it and protects the calf from negligence or violence. Dairy cows are not maternal at all. You might have seen beef cows, they are maternal, she continued. I wonder if protecting calves from negligence and violence also applies to the newborn calves who were killed for veal or who are live exported to different countries around the world. Or I wonder if it applies to the female calves who are forcibly impregnated over and over again until they can't produce enough money in the farmer's eyes to justify keeping them alive any longer, and at which point they'll be taken to a slaughterhouse to be slaughtered so the farmer can extract the last bits of money that they possibly can from their bodies. I wonder if dairy farmers really do care about protecting newborn babies from negligence and violence, because it seems slightly suspicious to make that claim, considering that their entire industry revolves around causing negligence and violence to these animals. They will literally profit off of these animals having their necks slashed open, and then have the audacity to claim that they care about protecting these animals from violence. What an utter joke. Every time I read this, I'm always reminded of that time a dairy farmer who was being interviewed broke down when he was talking about the separation of the newborn calves from their mothers. It's part of the job and uh, you need to take the calf away because you need the milk. The calf <clears throat> at that point, of course, knows no better other than its instinct tells them something is a bit funny, a bit odd. Um, the mother, well, it varied. Some Sometimes they just walked over to the silage feed science and started eating and he thought um, they haven't even noticed. Um, and then there's others that would um, bawl for days. So, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and that was probably the distressing side of it. That affected you, it affects you now talking about it. <laughs> and again, isn't it just so convenient that the cows who we raise for their flesh, well, they're these wonderful mothers who really take care of their babies, so there's no reason for us humans to intervene. But these dairy cows, the ones we raise for their milk, well, they're negligent and violent mothers. I mean, goodness knows how these animals manage to survive for millennia without us humans separating the babies from their mothers. How did they possibly manage it? Now, the only way it would even be remotely possible for dairy cows to be these ubiquitously violent and negligent mothers is if we had selectively bred them in such a way as to purposefully give them these characteristics and traits. Yet this is obviously not the case. Dairy farmers don't claim this to be the case, and we need only look at examples such as the dairy farmer who broke down when talking about these separations to see how it's just obviously not the case. And just imagine what the response would be if dairy farmers said, well, actually, we've been selectively breeding dairy cows to make them violent and negligent mothers. I mean, how sick and disturbing does that sound? Although, to be honest, the dairy industry does revolve around sick and disturbing practices, so maybe we shouldn't be so surprised if we found out that is what they had actually been doing. But the truth is, of course, that's not what they've been doing. The reason they take the babies from their mothers 
is because of money. At the Surge Sanctuary, we have two rescued dairy cows called Moksha and Ella. And we also have two rescued calves from the dairy industry called Paul and Rue. Now, Paul and Rue were only weeks old when we rescued them, whereas Moksha and Ella were many years old by this point. And since the animals have been together, they've shown nothing but friendship and unity with one another. At no point have these violent and aggressive and negligent dairy cows at any point done anything to harm anyone, cow, human, or any other animal. So obviously it's great that viewers are upset about the separations of babies from their mothers, especially as they're upset about a farm which is actually much better than the average dairy farm. What they do in this farm is not the standard industry practice, and yet it's still so bad that viewers are upset with what is taking place. But it's also important to recognize that these separations are only one aspect of the problem. The dairy industry as a system, as an industry, is inherently immoral, and the separations are just one aspect of that. So we should be upset about what happens in the dairy industry, and then of course, we should choose to no longer participate in it as well. Just stop buying dairy products. But we also need to recognize that dairy farmers will lie through their teeth to try and manipulate us into turning a blind eye to what they do. And what they do is morally abhorrent. But the reason they do what they do is because we as consumers demand through our purchases that they do what they do. But we can stop it at any moment by simply no longer purchasing these products. Simply put, it's not good enough to just be upset about what happens. It's not good enough to just tweet about what happens. What we have to do is stop paying for what happens. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. As always, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of the segment in question. Have you heard this dilution of colostrum argument before? And what is the most ridiculous argument that you've ever heard a dairy farmer use to justify separating newborn babies from their mothers. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.